So you're trying to develop value-based system, uh, just like a value-based business that would create opportunities for young people to be more successful. So this started with personal development, started that core, make sure guys graduated and had the and prepared themselves for when they couldn't play football. And uh, also the whole concept of branding uh, and making sure you had an image out there that was going to be something that would be uh, enhance your chances of being successful and create opportunities for your future and see if you could develop a career as a football player. Now, what we've done between uh, freedom to transfer and create free agents and, and um, the whole idea that we've created a pay for pay play um, sort of uh, model in college athletics have created some issues in being able to actually have a program and a system that would enhance those very values that I just talked about. And how does this even impact other sports uh, relative to Title IX, uh, relative to non-revenue sports? And how do we continue to create some kind of a model moving forward where we do improve the quality of life of the student athlete, but create some kind of a balance in terms of uh, competitive balance, uh, which all venues have some guidelines and rules that create some kind of competitive balance, which right now we don't have in college athletics. It's whoever wants to pay the most money, raise the most money, buy the most players, is going to have the best opportunity to win. I don't think that's the spirit of college athletics. I don't think it's ever been the spirit of what we want college athletics to be. So um, that's my major concern, the combination of pay for play, free agency, and how that impacts development. And I can attest that I've had two NFL coaches tell me, and this is a football deal because they're concerned about the football part, that the players come to them less developed, uh, with more entitlements and less resiliency to overcome adversity. We've worked so hard for the last 20 years to, to improve health care for players, to have mental health care for players. All the things that we work so hard to improve on, we're going to start seeing slide in the wrong direction because we've created a uh, uh, an environment uh, that really does not promote personal development or uh, that is going to create success for their future. You know, one, one question I have to ask, uh, you just retired from a, a amazingly and historically of the law contribute to your decision to retire now. Well, all the things that I believed in for all these years, 50 years of coaching, no longer exist in college athletics. So it's always was about developing players. It was always about uh, helping people be more successful in life. Uh, my wife even said to me, we'd have all the recruits over on Sunday uh, with their parents for breakfast. And uh, she would always meet with the mothers and, uh, talk about how she was going to help and uh, impact their, um, you know, like right before I retired, said, why, why are we doing this? And I said, what do you mean? She said, all they care about is how much you're going to pay them. They don't care about how you're going to develop them, which is all what we've always done. So why are we doing this? So, you know, to me, that was sort of a red alert that, we really are creating a circumstance here that is not beneficial to the development of people. And that is not like Street. <laughs> What's up, bro? What's going on, man? I don't know, dog. I don't know, Tricky Nicky. I don't know. <laughs> so everybody out there just to let you know we are back on hey street we have landed in washington dc as you can see right over there by street head is the washington monument behind our billboard is the doggone uh white house but uh we in dc right now uh we saw nick saban uh ted senator ted cruz some other senators there athletic director from alabama uh the acc commissioner 
uh, was there. I mean, the ACC, uh, I guess, commissioner was there and some other people. I don't know. The Cavender twins from Miami, the two young ladies, I kind of always referenced to NIL, and I thought they did a great job maximizing it. They were there as well. And they were there. So, yeah, they were there as well. And they spoke and everything else. So, Streets, you brought this up yesterday as your I don't see how. And I had to get off because I had to do, of course, my Kings talk live and talk about my beloved Miami Hurricane. And you were thrashing, Nick Yeah, you got me (laughs) fired up, dog. But again, I'm very big on context matters. So that's why I said I want to watch the whole thing. I was on Nick Saving Head. But I got a little different opinion, and it may not be the popular opinion. Uh, what's your thoughts on it, man? Um, I believe. Um, nah, give me your thoughts on it. <laughs> All right. Because we heard it- my thoughts on it already now. The whole well, recap it for the people that may be new today. So, recap so it for the people that's new today. All right. So basically, last at the end of the show yesterday, we got the little short clip of Nick Saban basically saying, "College football is not about what it was about before. Him and his family no longer has the control that they had before. That's kind of why he got out of college football because what he did before he realizes was no longer going to work. Um, mm-hmm. and to it to it look like to us is like man you won for 15 years or whatever you raped college football you got the biggest bag you can possibly get you walked out the door night and shine and armor and then ran to congress and said hey man i don't like the way it's going now that the kids are getting money kind of messy okay. down there right <laughs> and me and you blasted him for that you know what i'm saying blast hold him, up, dog. Bro. yeah hold on, hold up dog you can't be in, in the game playing in the game. You can't be gang banging, getting rich, looting and hooting, and then walk out the game and be like, "Hey man, it's kind of rough down there between the Crips and the Bloods. I don't like how it's going." That's snitching, <laughs> dog. That's the true definition of snitching. Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 so you had a chance to go watch the whole entire thing, right? All right. And what was your take on the whole entire point of what they were trying to get across? It was an hour and 30 minutes long. So Hayes done put some work in. Yeah. So I'll say this. I I, I believe in context. I believe it matters. Um, if you take a snippet of anything, it can sound like whatever it is when you hear it. And when I heard it yesterday, because that was the first time I even heard of it, I didn't know they were doing that. I didn't, you know what I mean? And then again, I saw Ted Cruz up there. That's a, that's a different story. That set me off. And when you listen to it in its entirety and you listen to the ADs, you listen to the, uh, I, I listen more to the people that's in the fire than the people mm-hmm. that's outside like Congress. I don't really care what they think because they're on the outside. It's almost right. like your job when you, your boss going to give you all these new rules and all these new procedures. And he's sitting in the office and on the 13th floor in the corner office o- overlooking the city and you down there making doggone transmissions for Ford Motor Company and he trying to tell you you're doing it wrong or he trying to tell you how to make it easy. So I believe in right. listening to the people in the fire. Uh, to Nick Saban, I'll say this. Yeah, bro, you've been throwing bags for years. It is what it is. That we know. I think that's a given. It is right. what it is. But here's what he said, and that's why I played at the beginning. The team with the most money is going to have the most wins. And I believe that because he has proved that because he was throwing bags. He got the best players. (laughs) Right or wrong? Is that that fair? It is fair. He was the one. He was the one with the most money, the most bag, the most backing. And And yet it turned into what? And and it turned into the most protection. Mm -hmm. And it turned into the most wins and dynasties. You see it happening. And I I would say in essence from Georgia, the understudy Kirby smart learned, been with Nick Saban for years and years and years. He took that blueprint to Georgia. This is not saying that they guys can't coach, but they know how to work it. What I heard in this, and I know it's not going to be the most popular opinion, 
but whatever. Guys, let me know if the chat is still working. I, I let y'all type something in the chat to make sure it's still working because there ain't nobody saying nothing. Coach getting a little worried. But anyway, what they were saying was they are not against players getting paid in the essence of truly what NIL was for, meaning your name, your image, and mm -hmm. your likeness. Mm -hmm. The problem I think all coaches are having, and I'll even throw Deion Sanders into this because he's been very vocal about it, is the collective avenue of it and the transferring avenue of it. I don't think anybody is complaining that kids can make money off of what they have done and who they are on and off the football field and other sports included. The problem is now people are not getting paid for their name, image, and likeness. They're getting paid to play. Okay. And I agree, but they've also said what I've been saying. They've also said a lot of what I've been saying. Uh, there was also a guy, I think he's the president of the collective union or whatever it was. He he represents 30 some co uh, collectives. He was there as well. Um, an attorney was there for the Cap Cavender twins who was talking about how these collectives are getting so nasty that he has seen something. Now, this is his words, paraphrasing. He's seen some deals where collectives are taking 100% of these kids, almost like a 360 deal in route. These collectives are now taking 100% revenue from these players until they're paid back. Off of, and, and they're trying to broker NIL deals through the collective. So in essence, the collectives are becoming a pseudo uh, NIL agency. Ex explain that. I, I need understanding of that. Okay. So I am, um, let's just, I hate to say this because the dang old NCAA be watching us. But let's just take Miami, the Kane Collective. The Kane Collective goes to D Street and said, D Street, I'm going to give you $400,000. All right? Mm -hmm. Cool. You come, you sign away, whatever. Now, they're going to broker your NIL deals. Uh, I don't know, Chevrolet, Dr. Pepper, whatever. They're going to recoup their $400,000 through your NIL deals until they receive their $400,000 back. And then after that, some of them have brokered 50% commission on, on the deal. So let's say, for example, you get $100,000 per year from Chevrolet. I'm just picking this thing. Mm-hmm. You technically don't get any money for that because we've already fronted you 400000 They paid you already. Yeah. They front-ended you, right. So they mm -hmm. gave you four hundred. dollars Then now let's say you sat, they satisfy the 400000 and let's say you're in college for a fifth year, and that's another $100,000 Chevrolet is going to give you. The NIL Collective is going to get 50% of that, so they're going to take home $50,000 of your deal for brokering that deal. For the for the for the next batch of kids, they they just trying to keep money in the funnel. Correct, but they're right. but they're, but look at the percentage. We're talking hell. I thought the agents was bad. These collectives saying, "Hey, I'm gonna give you fifty percent. I'm taking fifty percent of what you make, so forth and so on." Now I don't know how far that goes into maybe even in their NFL. You now know, they, that part they, of that. They, I, they I don't know. Past, yeah, they can't go past that. They can't go past college. So let's just stay in college. Okay. Legally, okay. they can't. They're not supposed to go past college. They can't okay. broker anything. Okay. Okay, I didn't know. That's why I said I don't okay. know. All right, mm -hmm. fine. That is where I think the coaches are having a real problem. I think what what this committee, this roundtable was about, was to say, "Look, bro, this is the issue. The issue is." The, the team with the big bank take little bank. I can pay X amount of dollars, but on the back side of this, and shout out to Ray, one of our members. She talked about this last night in our Discord. She was talking about this. But the NIL, the collectives are doing the record deal deal on the players. They've given them, hitting them with a 360. <laughs> Bro. So, yeah, you get 400000 up front. But you earn no more money from that. Or if you do earn any more money after you pay back 100% of technically the loan, mm -hmm. you're now, some of them 50%, 40%, 30%.
of your earnings for brokering these NIL deals because they are quasi right NIL brokers. That's what that means. The second biggest thing I brought of this, and this is something that a lot of football fans and 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 men's college basketball fans are not taking into consideration, the non-revenue sports. The non-revenue sports. And here is something that's big, and people who have power will do this. The Alabama AD was there. He said, we only have two revenue-making sports out of the 21 sports we have on campus. Two, men's basketball and football. Football makes 85% of the money. Basketball makes 15. Men's basketball makes 15% of the money. Those two sports help support the other 19 sports. Right. Now, here's the problem. Those non-revenue making sport people want what? They want Some an NIL of, deal too. They yeah, some type of money. Right. You know what I'm saying? They want an NIL deal too. So there you have it. All right, cool. Then they start talking about the tax structure. They said it cost them roughly ninety three thousand dollars per student athlete in scholarship, meaning tuition. Uh, food, insurance, medical, uh, training, all of that stuff per year, $93,000 per student uh, for all of the things that they offer within their scholarship that comes with their scholarship. Right. That's what they were saying. So just to kind of slow it down a little bit, what are your thoughts on that based on what you're hearing there? Uh, um, I think, I think that political game in that room there, uh, those suits have played that game for a long time and, and they could break anything down and make it sound as good or as bad as, as they want to make it sound. Um, I hear him. I heard them using a lot of leveling playing field, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's just going to, it's just going to be whoever has the biggest bag is going to take. It's going to be the team that win. Right. Right. And, and I say to that, I say to this, I say that to this. Jed Fish, three years at Arizona, goes 10 and 3, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Washington, Washington coach, Kalen DeBoer, right? Goes to the national championship. And almost, almost, him in Michigan, they go toe to toe. It almost wins a national championship. Right. A couple years back, LSU coach Kelly, right, skipped town on who's Oregon? Who he skipped town on and he went to LSU? Notre Dame. Notre Dame, right. Skipped town right for season. It was right for spring practice started, something crazy like that. Skipped town, mm -hmm. end up at LSU. Hey, could you could you tell me why? Um, from his perspective, from what he every last no, no, every last one, all three of them coaches. <laughs> Why did they leave their current place? Because uh -huh. I just explained both all great come all great, they was all in good position. You know what I'm saying? Arizona, uh -huh. somebody just said, Hey, they, they Arizona can go undefeated this year. Jeff Fish built that. Washington went to the national championship last year. Hey, uh -huh. Boy built that. Uh. O'Brien was at Notre Dame. They was fine. And then he ended up at LSU. Why? Mm -hmm. Hayes, could you tell me why? I, I guess the easy answer you want to say is money? No. Well, what would you say? Uh, well, what I'm saying is uh, for better opportunity with so far as players. Um, I think a lot of these coaches at that level are not chasing the money more than they're chasing the opportunity to win. And you win because of better players better rec fertile recruiting ground, all of that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Um, you know, right. nine, five, nine million to eight million is not that big a difference. I mean, I, I would take seven million and have better players than take 10 million and have worse players. Because at the end of the day, if I can win more games, it it, it, it brings my value. But that's just me talking. But go ahead. Mm -hmm. Right. They have what better. So put that graphic up for me. So they have better opportunity at those schools, right? Mm-hmm. I don't even have to look. We can all agree in the comment section. They all took more money. Yes or no? 
Yes, because they increase their value. Sure. Mm -hmm. Right. Recruiting champions the last 10 years equal to me at all. This doesn't look like a level playing field to me at all. The last 10 years, Alabama was the recruiting champion eight out of 10 and the other two schools, other two times it was who? Georgia. Right? Right. Mm -hmm. This can't possibly be about a level playing field. It's always been big bank, take a little bank. It's always been, if you have anything of value, Arizona, we're going to take it. Okay. Anything. When the transfer portal first started, the one thing that startled me was watching Gibbs being taken from Georgia Tech for no reason to go play at Alabama. Because we all thought the transfer portal was, was a thing where Georgia, <laughs> Alabama, Ohio State, these schools didn't need it. Mm -hmm. When I saw Gibbs get taken from Georgia Tech for no reason at all, <laughs> and was Alabama starting running back, I was like, holy crap, I did not account for that. I didn't account for that to happen because it's always been big bank take little bank. Correct. So I want to take that off the table. Period. Okay. The small schools have never been able to have shit. <laughs> Because Big Bank was going to take from them. That's okay? that, but can I ask you a question real quick? Okay. Is that is that is that fair across all business in life? Walmart takes away from the mom and pop stores because they can offer lower prices because they buy a hundred thousand heads of lettuce a day versus the mom and pop, the George and Jerry IGA, who only buying 50. So is that a business model? Like it's always been that way. It's always going to be big bank. You're right. It's all so 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 for them to bring that up, like as if big bank take little bank just 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 arrived when 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 nil got here. Mm -hmm. it's, it's I'm just saying that part of it is 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 BS Hayes. It's always it's always it's always it's always, it's, it's always been that the smaller schools have always suffered. You understand? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, they, they've always suffered. I just, it just, I just find it odd that anytime, anytime the kids, the athletes mm -hmm. come up with a way to put money in their pockets or benefit, there's always a cry for help. For there to be some system to govern it, or, or 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 to to control it, because every time that system comes, where do the kids end up again? Right back on the bottom. They're the gonna bottom. do something silly. Yeah, they're gonna do something silly. Like say, hey, we're gonna let the schools control the NIA. They're gonna do something silly. <laughs> they're gonna do something silly that gives power back to the schools and back to the machine, which have always had power. Okay. Um let, let, okay, let me let, let, let's 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 backtrack a little bit because we're going to get a little deep. I'm not sure what you got to do. I'm good. We normally do an hour, but I do mm -hmm. want to kind of dive into this today if you don't mind, but if we do an hour, I'm cool with that as well. Um here's what I'm going to say. I know that name. Okay. I think there's three there's three major components here mm -hmm. that are that are they're battling themselves. They don't complement one another. Name, image, and likeness. Collectives transferring. But they all fall under the umbrella term of name, image, and likeness. Would you agree with that? No, why 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 would you put them under the same umbrella? Because they are already. Because they I are. Don't, I don't think they can. Yeah, you I told me that collectives are are part of name, image, and likeness. That's why those two. Are, no, no, those two have to be under the same under brother. But the transfer portal just happened to be a necessary evil that arrived <laughs> at the same time. But the transfer portal, uh huh, is primarily is, is being used as a threat for name, image, and likeness. That's what I'm saying. Like they said. 
how much I'm getting paid. If not, I'm out. So that's yeah. why I put the. That's why I said the transfer portal kind of falls yeah. under that. You get where I'm coming from. Just right? like any negotiation too. Like yeah, I mean Correct. yeah I, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now here's what the biggest thing was, and, and you tell me if I'm wrong. You tell me where you stand on this. Okay. The players, everybody said the payers need to be played be paid for their name, image, and likeness because the university is making X, Y, and Z off of their name, image, and likeness, and they get nothing. I will go back to a very easy example of Tim Tebow, the highest-selling jersey of all time, and he received not a red penny from it. <laughs> so every, and that's uh -huh. that's criminal. That's that is criminal. <laughs> it is. But. That's what people wanted. The collectives now come in, and here's where I, I, I said the NCAA dropped the ball, and they talked about it. I urge anybody, if you're really interested in this, go look at that hour and a half deal. Uh, I, it, it's, it's really informative. But listen to, like I say, listen to what they're saying um, because of some things that, that they bring up, and it's, it's political now. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying you got to believe everything, but just listen to what's being talked about. They're talking about tax structures. They're talking about all of the things that we don't think about on the back end of business. We're just looking at the front end payers get a check. But what are you talking about from a, from a business side? And let's not get this under, misunderstood. My famous thing is F that family junk. It's about business. And right. so when Nick came in here and talked about that, that's another thing. And I'm going to get into development too. I think that's big, but excuse me, man, this pollen in the F so bad got me going. But uh, anyway, I'm soft, right? I got I got allergies. But anyhow, um, everybody wanted the players to get paid for their name, image, and likeness. And when you heard that street, did you think name, image, and likeness meant we're going to give you $50,000 to come to the school? Or did you think the kids could now get paid to sign autographs, baseball cards, or football cards, jerseys, uh, do appearances? That's what you thought name, image, and likeness was when you first heard it coming out? I think I think I think I think when I heard it because it's name, image, and likeness. It's all it's all separate. But I think when I heard it, all I heard was they have legally opened the door to get players money. That's all I heard. <laughs> that's okay. All, that's all I heard. That it's now but on how? Top of the, now that's on, fine. But, but it's how? Now on top but of how? The table but no, hey, it's because we all know they always were getting paid. God damn, we always know that. That was like a for Thank you. yeah, yeah. So Thank all I ever so all I heard was, oh, they've made it legal. And I knew that they were going to figure out a way to legally make it work for them to pay the kids. That's that's all I that's all I heard. I, I knew that wasn't, yeah. So here's what I will say to you. Uh-huh. A lot of people don't know this either. You're 100% correct, but I did think that it was a way for it was legally a way for, legally a way for the kids to get paid, but I thought that the kids would have an opportunity without having an underhand and do the Johnny Manziel and and sign all these jerseys and cards and stuff under the table. They could now do it openly. Like they could go to a Canes wear, for example, like for people that don't know that's not watching, that's a store they have in, in uh well, it's not actually in, even in miami but i just say south florida that sells a lot of miami hurricane gear dolphin stuff and the players maybe could go to there go to that store one day do a signing or whatever the case may be right sign helmets and baseball cards and yada 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 and canes wear would pay them to come do that appearance you know what mm -hmm. i mean that kind of stuff right. Right. um a commercial maybe for a local business whatever but like i said the collectives came in and that's where it became pay for play. Because your name, image, and likeness is built off of what you do and who you are and what you, pr and what you produce on the football field. That's what we were saying. Now, I will say this. Do you know that these, and, and again, we're speaking Power 5 here. Do okay. you know that Power 5 players actually get a check every month? Did yeah. You know yeah, yeah, like three thousand. Some it's, it's different everywhere, right? A little bit. So uh -huh. it's called it's called cost of attendance, right? Uh huh. Cost of attendance. That's part of their scholarship. They don't pay taxes on that, from my understanding. 
So if you give me three grand a month, right? Mm-hmm. That's three. Some of them making four grand a month. They even said it in that in this this round table. So the players are making between forty and fifty thousand dollars a year, right? That's what right. they're bringing home. And you think about it, they have no other expenses. They don't have a housing expense. They're not paying rent. They're not paying for food. They're not paying for any insurance. They have no overhead except things they want to spend money on. If they want to go out to eat, they go out to eat. But that's on them. But they do have access to food. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. Um, so you bring bringing home four grand a month. You're bringing home a salary. You actually bring home a salary that a lot of teachers make. Right? Right. So the days, let's. Let, let, I just want this to be clear. The days of players going home starving are not happening at this level. I'm not talking about smaller schools. We're talking about P5. The days of kids going home hungry are no more. Would you agree with that? Uh, and they're getting the bag under the table now. So let's not uh, get that to us. I, I believe, yeah, I've spoken to a few of them, bro. And, um, the, the ones who didn't have the big NIL deals or didn't wasn't getting the NIL. Well, I'm money. talking about before NIL. Before NIL, I'm talking about strictly just cost of attendance that's coming from the university. I think I think starving. I, I think I think. Damn, we I, this goes a little deeper. Now we're talking about being able to deal with three thousand dollars a month and being able to manage four thousand dollars a month. They spending that shit in the first week. So hold on, I'm with you. And again, mm-hmm. that's a different thing. But we're talking about. Right. Giving is no different than you go out here and give them uh, two hundred thousand dollars a year. They still go, could burn through it if they don't have any financial literacy. However, they were now giving this money. Now, what you do with it, that's on you. You understand? But we're just on the first level. How I'm saying is they're giving four thousand dollars a month with no other expenses to truly be paid. So far as required expenses like rent and hell, if you go off campus, they cut you a check. For what you would have got, what for what they paid for to I mean, room and board, you get that in a check as well to pay your rent. Mm-hmm. I want people to understand that too. So when these kids move off, I'm sorry, the young men move off campus, they don't move off campus and have to use that four thousand. They get they get what they would have received to live on campus in a check as well. But anyhow, hey Street, is it just me or you not getting any comments? Anybody making comments on here? I don't get, I'm not getting any comments. And I just yeah. want to make sure it's no, 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 they comment. I don't have any yeah. comments up here. No, no. Ham, Ham just made a comment. Bomb. They go one seven forty oh, seven forty one. I had to refresh it. I had Brandon to refresh book. it. L and V in here talking mad trash. You missed all that trash he talking. Coach all of that. It was stuck. That's why I said somebody put a comment. Okay, I got it. It's up now. She, she said you're allergic up. to saving crying, dog. I am. He crying on pollen tears. All right, now I see it. I feel better now. I feel no. I'm good now. I had to refresh it. All right. So I say all that because I saw we got over two hundred twenty people in the building. Appreciate y'all. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. We bumping tonight, dog. YouTube don't know they noticing us now, dog. You know what I'm saying? They hey, like my when shit. your idols become rob, when your idols become rivals, dog. <laughs> you understand? So, so I'm saying all that to say they're walking around with about forty grand a year in their pocket. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. Yeah. So they get food and room and board. Yeah. <laughs> they get. Right. I'm saying they got food. They got room and board. They got a lot uh-huh. of things. Right. Uh, um, do me a favor. I got somebody uh, that's in the chat right now. I'm going to leave them nameless. Do me a favor. If you wouldn't mind texting me those things in which they get paid for, because I know you have some firsthand knowledge. I'll leave you nameless, but you know who I'm talking to. Uh, do me a favor. Text me that information so I can kind of read it down because I know you work in that that kind of area, if you understand what I'm saying. And give, give me a little bit more ammunition in this fight because I got I to gotta bring out that, that AK. But uh, anyhow, I got my cool uh, D's on the day. The wild, wild west, 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 west. I go downtown. One twenty fifth Street. Oh, nah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so anyway, so now you're talking about these players walking around with forty grand, forty grand a year with no expenses. Now, what they do with the money? That's another thing we could talk about maybe later or another day, whatever. So, so now with that being said, um, they have that money. Okay, great. (coughs) 
J Dub, leave me alone. Um, also their <laughs> pill, their Pell Grant, that's part of it too. Pell Grant, when they fill out the FAFSA, they get that money back because they're on full scholarship. So that's about five, maybe it's a probably part of the six grand now. So that that's around another six grand they get a year and, and get back in return. Uh, if you understand what I'm saying. So they're not walking around and they like starving. And when I say starving, me like, man, I don't have any money, but this, that, and other. Now, we could talk about sending money home and whatever. That's a, that's another thing, too. However, all right. I guess my, my, my whole thing is why would why can't a kid get and, and I don't care, there should be no ceiling on your on your name, image, and likeness. If Caleb Williams goes out there and does a Dr. Pepper commercial and get and he's making a million dollars a year for his Dr. Pepper commercial, more power to him. Because guess what Caleb Williams is still getting, y'all? He's still getting the cost of attendance. He's still getting that 40000 like everybody else on top of his NIL deal. Mm-hmm. All right. So I say all that to say, what, what, what's your thoughts on it? And, and remember, that money is also being paid to these other college athletes too. They're getting that same deal. That and their programs don't generate dollars. I mean, what what do you what are you saying? Like, what what you, 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 what point are you trying to no, make? Just, they got a little money in their pocket. No, my point was they're not. It's not like they're walking around with zero dollars. They they have they're getting forty grand, right? Just roughly, we're saying forty grand. Okay, that's about four grand a month. All right, so roughly around there. And do you believe that everybody should get paid the same thing, but not make the same contributions to the team? No, I don't. I don't think. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Life ain't fair like that. Correct. So, so yeah. therein lies the, the issue. So the, therein lies the, the problem. The football the coach don't get paid the back, same. The fo- mm-hmm. but the Good, football, the, the, the badminton coach at the college don't get paid the same as Nick Saban. Correct. The women's basketball coach probably ain't nowhere in the in the ballpark. Not even close. <laughs> it ain't even, it ain't even, so life life is not fair. That's not how that is not how life is set up. Now Correct. I did have fear of somebody getting robbed in the locker room one day. <laughs> Because of the disparage between the pay, between some of the incoming freshmen, some of the guys that were already there. Um, but no, no, life isn't fair. So they shouldn't all get the same thing. But I, I think that was created. You got to understand that the collective thing was created by the school. Nick Saban was one of the first ones to yell out what a collective was. I'm just going to create a collective and I'm going to get the kids. They're all going to get paid. He said that on the stage when, 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 when Jimbo Fisher was, was coming at him and said he knew where the, the, the dead bodies was buried. <laughs> so, so that idea came from the school. So they could control, so they could have some type of system to tell these kids, Hey, listen, man, when you come here, man, you 30,000, 40,000, 50,000, this is how we going to do it. Yada, yada, yada. I've heard high school kids and their parents say, listen, you can give me collective money all you want to. But if Dr. Pepper want to give me a deal, I want my money. Right. You should. That's yeah. your NIL. That, and that, to me, that's what's registering. That is your NID, NIL deal. Yeah. An outside entity paying you to provide a service, whether it's commercials, signings. Right. You showing up, doing something, voiceovers, whatever it is. Whatever right. it is. And I think the problem is where the big big bank take little bank is, these kids are not getting NIL deals. They're getting collectives, and they're calling them NIL. I know it goes under the same umbrella, but they're yeah. getting the pay-for-play pot of money, and they're not out here actually broke getting a deal from – said company and, and here and herein lies the problem Street. yeah because because i think what's happening is 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 here's the other elephant in the room 
the, the University of Alabama has sponsors, don't it, Hayes? What, what do you mean in regards just overall? Yeah, they have sponsors, right? Oh, yeah, like I guess Pepsi or Coke or something like that, right? Of course mean? they yeah, of course they do. Sometimes you even see schools the, the coach come to the podium with, and, with, yeah, right. uh, Alabama has Coke because he always got the Coke or the Sunny Water sitting up there. Yes. So actually, so 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 they came up with a system that said, Hey man, we ain't gonna pay y'all nothing. We're gonna treat it like it's golf. Go find your money, right? But the same companies that they're saying go find your money from, the school has as sponsors also. But it was a thing. It was it, it was a cutout of Jaquari on a Bacardi cutout, and somebody sent it to me. It didn't say his name on it. It was just him. It was 6'3. It was his number. It was <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He was a quarterback, but it didn't say his name on it. And it said Bacardi at the bottom. You think that was Jaquari's NIL? No. Mm-hmm. No. So, so so the collective could be could be playing the kids, right? And bringing in the big sponsors. To sponsor the brand, the team. Mm-hmm. Is it supposed to work like that? No. But the University of Miami also is still looking for money. And you see that they're still, they still advertising with these brands and their brand and, and these kids. So you gotta ask yourself, like, how? Well, is the collective because- paying Jacory Brown? But his name, image, and likeness to put him on a stand up, and he just don't know it. <laughs> but here, so hold on. So I love that. Uh huh. To me, to me, if you're going to use that kid's face in the Alabama ad, then that kid should get a percentage of the of that whatever that deal is, like Alabama itself. Yeah. Like for example, Alabama. Say for example, I'm just saying Coke. Coca Cola right. uses Jalen Milrow in in their Coca Cola ad. Yes, right. he should get paid a part of that money because it's not just solely him; it's also Alabama. Because remember, in their name, image, and likeness, they cannot use the school imaging. Yeah, but so they didn't I'm, have but his face. Right, right, right. They didn't have his so, face. So, it was his so then they found a loophole. They found a loophole, that, but guess but, what? But hold I on, think that's his on. image and likeness. That's his likeness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. So he can sue so, for that. So yeah, so I think we got a third show out of this Hayes because I think I think I think it's something there with the collective. See, I don't want to breathe. I don't want to breeze past the fact that the collective giving. I'm just bringing up a name and a number. Bane four hundred thousand dollars up front. I don't want to breeze past that. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That's something that Ohio State Collective is doing, Florida Collective is doing, Florida Collective is burned to the ground or some shit. I don't know what happened to Florida Collective. But that's something that the collectives are doing for the school that is a service that's that was needed, right? Because they okay. saw where this thing was going, right? How do you go okay. after a Cam Ward and with 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 no with just go after him? You don't know what he's going to ask for. I don't know what he's looking for, but feel comfortable going after him. So let's not breeze past Let's not breeze past the fact that somebody's fronting you money. Cause can you front somebody two hundred thousand Hayes? I can't. You oh, know yeah, what I'm saying? So it's a yeah, big deal. It's 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 I'm gonna do it. But I need fifty percent return though. Bro. If not, I'm coming after you with a coche colion. They gonna come after you with a bat and take out your knees. Forget about right. it. Right, so I don't want to breeze past the fact that because I just read the Kane Collective and the purpose and what they, they're doing. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to breeze past the fact that they are doing something to these teams that these fans love to, to facilitate this crazy situation that has arise, right? Um, but I want I want people to understand that it, the situation came from Northwestern saying, Hey, we're going to unionize and go after the money, the TV money, all of the big money, you know what I'm saying, that comes into college football. And then NCAA stood up really fast and said, hey, mm. y'all can have your name and image like, likeness back. Go go find some money. Okay. Real so, quick, they did, oh, great, great. Mm-hmm. so they did that. They did that to steer away from what's inevitably ha- inevitable has to happen one day. One day. 
that okay. that these kids get paid from these TV contracts and it's real money that, that that's coming in. Um, but they did that to stay away from that. Now, shout out to Zozuchi, right? Zozuchi said, I don't think the coaches have a problem with paying the kids. The parents who are demanding money from the visits and the commitment, that's what they dislike. See, Zozuchi, I'm gonna say that. I'm gonna say this, Zozuchi, and shout out to you for your 499, right? Thank you, man. I want us to stop looking at every time somebody give us money and somebody giving us money. I want us to start saying when we're dealing with money, that is business. If Jeremiah Smith visits Syracuse, that helps Syracuse. Jeremiah Smith, in my, in, in, in my in, how I feel, should be able to say, how much money are you giving me for you to attach your damn school to my name? To say I was there because you may not get me, but you may get the number 15 while receiving the nation. Advertisement. I like it. Let's stop. talk every person Because anytime we start talking about money, we start talking about it like, oh, you're all about money. That's all you're thinking about is money. And money is a bag under the table. No, man. Let's just start calling it business. And let's start coming up with better names to call these things. You understand? Because there's a lot of shady things that go on in corporate America, but they call it, they got all type of names for it, Hayes, don't they? <laughs> yeah, uh, okay, let me do this, Street. Let me do this, because I got the information. Shout out to my man. I got the information about the thing, but I do want to say this. I get that. I hear you. But if it's if we're going to treat it like business, if we're going to treat it like business, let's call it what it is. The employees don't get paid as much as the CEO. You just said that. It, it's not fair. Unfortunately, the football players who generate the money, mm -hmm. who generate the money, that's the part of it. You can, It's the same model across the board. I just said this. There's a dude in a Ford Motor Company factory right now that puts together 15 transmissions a day. He uh -huh. makes $80,000 a year. He just right. made the transmission for 15 cars, but he only gets paid for what they sell one truck for. Right, right, right. Ooh, that so sounds that, so nasty. <laughs> but it's the truth. He does 15 a day. I'm just making his number up. I don't know. But whatever he does, he has made enough transmissions for a fleet of cars for the 2024 car sale, but he, he only makes what one car cost. So right. I hear that argument, but unfortunately, that is capitalism. That is business, since we're talking business. The guy who drives the Coca-Cola truck and delivers the Coca-Colas to all these convenience stores does not make the same amount of money as the CEO. He doesn't. Who, who are you calling the CEO? In this, in this, be careful now in this equation. No, no. Who are you calling, <laughs> who you calling the CEO? The CEO? Yeah. I, would say the, I would say the head coach. Okay. The head coach would be the CEO, right? Or or if you really want to look at it, the head coach would be the CEO. The school would be the business. Alabama would be the business. Nick Saban would be the CEO, right? The right. coaches are the managers, and the players are the employees. It's just what it is, right? It, it's what it is. That, that's, the, that's business one-on-one. -on -one. You right. own Footballville. Mm -hmm. You own Footballville. Right. The guy that does, the guy that does editing does he make more than you? No. But guess what? Those edits help Footballville grow. Right. That's that, I'm just same thing for and, me. In most in most industries, um, I got one for you though. Talk to last me. Last last year, D'Amico Ryan's made four million dollars. Right. Okay. Okay. CJ Stout made 36 million. You talking about NFL though. I'm just saying. <laughs> no, but yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm just I'm just oh. saying it's an industry that right. That's why I said be careful who you call the CEO because CJ will never make more than the owners. He won't. He won't. That'll never those happen. are the those are the CEO. There's no owner of Alabama. So the CEO of NFL team is the owner. So so but Jeremiah could make more than his coach one day. <laughs> he, he could, but he, he has could. to do it. Out. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold him out. He could, outside of, outside of 
Alabama. I mean, outside of Ohio State. What uh -huh. am I saying? That's like me right now. My boss at my job makes more yeah. than me. But because I'm hustling hard on YouTube, I may make more money than him overall when I submit my tax, but it's outside of my, my job. And that's what name, right. image, and likeness is. You're making more money outside of your job. Right. So Suppo Supposedly, so, they done brought the shit in the house, though. <laughs> correct, correct. But what I'm saying is, right. yeah, you could make more money, but you're not right. making more money under the entity of the university. Yeah. How, how do you feel about what Zozuchi said? Zozuchi say, Street, you don't play an employee for interviewing. A college visit is an interview. Hold on, where is it? Put it up. It's right here. Since Zozuchi sent us in the 499, we'll, we'll hit him up with another one. Street, you don't pay an employee for interviewing. A college visit is an interview. <laughs> what do you think about no, that? It's, it's the same thing. <laughs> no, I, I do agree with him. For example, do mm -hmm. you pay? Did you pay? Brad Pitt to come read for this movie? Did you pay? I'm just saying, did you pay? Uh, uh, and you put it out there. Hey, I got perfect example. I got Color Purple coming out to Roger G. Henson's reading for this part. I don't know, just bringing some names to Roger Henson. You know, I like Holly, Holly Berry, blah 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 blah. Uh -huh. Did they pay them to come? No, nah, they may have paid them for the visit, put them up in the hotel, but they didn't cut them a check for coming. Do you think and that's reading equal? for the part? You think it's equal? What do you mean? What do you mean equal? What do you mean? We're gonna keep using Jeremiah Smith. Jeremiah Smith gets five visits a year, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. He can choose to go to any college. Every how many colleges is it? Every last one of them colleges, mm -hmm. right? Right. Yeah. Well, he get more than five. He's got all of them. It's half unlimited. The colleges now. are denied. Half of the colleges are denied and be like, man, nah, man, you're not finna waste our time. We're not finna waste our money. No, you're not coming here, right? But the top colleges, right? Him coming to your school, that recruiter that gets him to your school, right? You're not bringing him there to interview him. This isn't the NFL. You're not bringing him there to sit down and look at him. You know what I'm saying? You're not bringing him there. You're bringing him there. Hoping and praying to God, because you saw you 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 saw Ohio State coach on signing day when mm -hmm. Jeremiah decided to go to Ohio State nine o'clock that night. The look on his face, thank yeah. God. Right. Yeah. So I don't think it's an interview. Well, we're not, it's not an interview. But what we're saying is, you're coming to the school. You're coming to the school to look at it. You're. It, it's it's almost like this. It's almost. Um, and, and Smiley, shout out to Smiley. What's up, LNV? I'm sorry I missed y'all. It was stuck, but shout out to y'all. Um, I don't know if I should pay. I'm already paying for you to come up here on the visit. I get where you're coming from. I'm paying right. for you to come here, but guess what? You also didn't have to choose to come here, like you said. So you chose to come here. I'm paying for your flight, I'm paying for your room and boy. We eating at Prime 112, we eating at the top notch restaurant. We ain't going by Burger King drive through. You're, eating, you're, you're living the best of life. We're, we're funding all of this. And mm -hmm. if you still chose not to come here, fine. What I'm saying, wh wh where I'm going with this is, again, you chose to go, as you used Syracuse earlier, go to Syracuse to go on a visit. So that's your choice. You decided to come there. Okay, you want to come? We pay for everything. Here's your flight. Here's your this. Here's your that. Here's your this. I just think, to me, that that's a little much that I'm going to pay you to come on a visit. I don't know, bro. I, I, I don't know. I, 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 me personally, I, because let's look at it. Since you said it's business, I'm looking at, I'm looking at that model across all businesses. Have you ever paid a guy to come when you interviewed them to come to the football field and work? You may put them up in the room or something. I'm saying, but you ain't pay. You ain't cut them a check because they came. You if cut them a hired, check. Because, if we was hiring mm -hmm. destroying, right? If we was trying to get destroying to come be a part of Hay Street, right? <laughs> we would make it as comfortable as possible for him to come and talk to us. Well, well exactly. okay. Well, ask, well, ask yourself this. Comfortable. Ask yourself this. Hold on. Do, do you think I'm gonna put you in the risk? Hold on. Comfortable. I'm gonna put you in the risk, Carlton. I'm gonna put you here. I'm gonna go. Hey, I'm gonna call my man X. We're gonna get us some 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 riders. We're gonna do all the comfortable things we could do. I'm right. with that. And what I'm gonna do? 
cut you a check for fifty thousand. Here you go. I'm not now, but again, <laughs> that's a little on. Un, that's under the table stuff. We're talking about above board, legit on board. Yeah, I gave him fifty thousand to come just to interview. If you did that, I mean, so be it. But that's not that is not normal business practice in my sense. But go ahead. I, 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 okay, so you coach the college football. You coach the FIU. I've heard your recruiting stories. Well, mm -hmm. just put yourself in these college shoes. Mm -hmm. Do you think Florida State had a problem with giving Jeremiah Smith 20000 to come visit for a weekend? Well, hold on. Let me ask you this. I, I'm not saying that these players didn't get paid now, but we're talking mm -hmm. about above board. We ain't talking about uh, under the table. We're talking about it's on the books because right. those recruiting visits are on the books. Hey, Jeremiah Smith came to Florida State. Uh, it was uh, 1500 for the hotel room for two days. We put spent like all of that is on the books. Mm -hmm. That's how they that's how they create budgets. But that 20 grand ain't on the books. We're talking about putting stuff on the books. I ain't talking about hey, that little envelope fell out my back pocket when we was walking to the car and you picked it up. That's a little different. But we're talking about on the book monies. Yeah, I, I think I think everything has a value. And it's what is it worth to you? And I think if we all sat down and thought about it, if we all sat down and thought about it, Washington mm -hmm. would pay a Jeremiah Spiff $30,000 to come on a visit. I, I believe so. Now, we're talking about one player, the number one player in the nation. Yeah, we're talking about, you know what I'm saying? But I, I believe so. I believe Washington would, would, wouldn't bet I. No, because 30000 is nothing to, like, you're right. 30000 mm -hmm. is peanuts to them. In right. essence, right to get this guy, but for it to be a common practice, think about it. For it to become <laughs> common knowledge that visit, oh, oh, watch this. Are gonna, all visit will be virtual if it becomes common. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. So that's where we, I think we make a difference. Is I think we are saying the same thing, but I'm saying right. it's got to be on the books. And I think you're saying it now. That if you don't, if people don't think that doesn't happen, it happens every time a kid come on a visit. One of these top elite players somebody somebody dropped an envelope somewhere yeah, somebody yeah i don't think these kids just happy to go walk around fucking penn state campus do you? no no that, that so that well, yeah, i'm not gonna get up six o'clock in the morning get on a plane it's freezing cold right Gotta be so that i'm not disputing yeah, i'm not yeah, i'm not disputing that i'm talking about this is part of this becomes the part of the normal recruiting practice because now jeremiah smith says that but then what about where's your threshold now, Streeter, where you stop paying? Because the dude that is ranked, the dude that's the 10th best wide receiver in the country is still mm -hmm. a very good wide receiver. Yeah. And I he think said, you gotta hey, have man, a system. I think you gotta have a system. Hold on, did you, you gotta, just say and, a structure? Yeah, I think you gotta have a, a well, you you have to have a structure with your money to know value on how how you would do it, or you'll be confused. You ain't got to, nobody ever see it. You know what I'm saying? But you'll be confused on who you would and wouldn't pay. And I think timing has a lot to do with it too. It could be down to the last couple of days of recruiting. Your ass need two wide receivers. Timing has a lot to do with it. No, I agree. But we're talking about the, 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 okay. Let me just say this, y'all. I ain't in the coaching no more. I said <laughs> those unofficial <laughs> visits, you know what I'm saying? Those unofficial visits, uh huh. They got, they got, they have official tendencies to them. If you understand what I'm saying, what you so, mean, man? Talking, talking in code, man. What you mean? Come on, man. Man, I ain't, I ain't trying to be Takashi six nine. <laughs> so what? You ain't gonna ever coach again, ever. Never ever coach again, never ever. Nobody ain't running no damn wing T no more. Goddamn triple option. I might. <laughs> If that cash right hey, there every night, Papa been smooth <laughs> since days of under rules. Anyway, no, what I was saying was even on unofficial visits, that's where a lot of the money gets handed because they can't pay for the flight, right? They can't pay for the flight. So somebody has to front that money. So you do have a lot of parents or coaches or whoever, I'm talking about high school coaches, who are paying for, Let's, I, you know, I, for example, I don't know Jeremiah Smith's financial situation from his home mm -hmm. standpoint, but let's just say, for example, 
he flies and goes to Syracuse or wherever, wherever. I don't want to put Syracuse out. I can't, I can't do my Wyoming. <laughs> uh, let's put Wyoming. He flies to okay. Wyoming. Matter of fact, here's a perfect one. Kamani McClain went to BYU. Now, nobody in their mama thought he was going to go to BYU. Right? Uh huh. Flew out there, did the photo shoot, all that stuff. What do you think enticed him to go to BYU in Utah, Brigham Young University? <laughs> and you're the number oh. one corner in the nation. The flowers. I know a brown paper bag. Brown paper bag. What I just said it. Right. So, right. I'm saying all that to say when they go on these trips. Now we don't. They get, now, hold on, hold on, hold on. We don't. We, we don't know this. Okay, we're not telling anybody anything we know. But if we had to take a guess, this is what we're saying. Matter of fact, disclaimer. Uh, <laughs> right. This information that you just heard is not true or factual by any means. <laughs> it's just simply a point. If you don't uh, say uh, micro machine, is not the real thing. All right. <laughs> so, correct. But I'm just saying. So now you look at a kid that flies to BYU, right? Goes right. out there. Somebody foots that bill. I guarantee they came back whole and probably plus some. So if they probably spent two grand to get out there, they probably came home with four. But that's not on the books. That's not on the books. Right. All right. So anyway, let, 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 let me ask you this. Because because I want to talk about because I think if y'all if y'all get a chance to watch it, it, it's very political. It's it's like you know, watch clothes or mop or something and put it on the TV and listen. You don't have to watch it. I mean, some guys sitting there talking, but the information what, is really deep. What, what was your feel though, Hayes? It felt to you that they were trying to accomplish what? I think that they were trying to let people know what all goes into this NIL. I think they were trying to attack the collectives and they were also giving so much more information uh -huh. of the inner workings of college athletic administration from a financial standpoint, because there's so much more money that's being moved around and taxes and all of that stuff that we don't think about. And I think they start. They, they kind of peeled the the, the the the. They took the cover off of it, so people can look on the back end and be like, "Man, think about it." What I just said: two programs pay for nineteen other programs. Do you think Alabama softball girls stay in the in the Super Eight motel? Hell no. I don't care. Exactly. You don't care. But then guess hey, what happens? Hold on. No, no. Listen. That and they brought this up. They brought this up. You don't Not care. Listening. You don't have to listen, but guess what? Somebody is. <laughs> it's, it's, here's the deal. Watch this. I'm going to tell you where they brought it to. They brought it to a lot of those are Olympic sports. Golf, right? Soccer, um, uh, um, swimming. They were talking about Olympic sports. So now let me ask you this, Street. Let me ask you this. Your daughter out there on the swim team, and she's staying in the turf motel, and she played for Alabama. You straight? You don't care? That what? That your that daughter played for Alabama. Your daughter's uh -huh. on the swim team for Alabama, right? And instead of the, they 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 not fly they they they, they taking a, a charter bus from Alabama to Indiana for a swim meet to save costs, uh -huh. right? And they stand in the turf motel and they got to eat at Mel's Diner instead of eating. The food, like good food. That should, okay never that? That, that, that should never happen. I know. That's what they're talking about. That all of this money. Every time still... they fire, every time they fire a Jimbo Fisher and have to pay him $70 million to fire him and then hire another coach two days later tells me that they have more money than they even give a fuck about. Every time they put a Waterfall in the locker room. Every time they put a real tiger <laughs> in a locker room. Every time they put virtual reality for quarterbacks to practice at Clemson in their facility. 
that motherfuckers who out in the real world haven't even seen yet tells me they have more money than they need. They have more money than they even know what the hell to do with it. They better not I send agree. my daughter to Mel's Diner. They better not. Eat my wearing, it, it, hey, it kiss diner. my grits. <laughs> kiss my grits. <laughs> they better not, bro. Dog, dog, they do too much lousy shit with money to be saying, well, who's going to pay for the, the water polo team? You? But they're not. That's what they're saying. They're not. So what they're about to say is if this gets out of control, what they're going to do through Title IX is start cutting programs. So they're going to stay. you know what? We don't need a gymnastics team at Alabama. <laughs> to, to what? Keep up? No, I'm keep saying. No, yes, that's what they're saying. Because remember, capitalism says we're here to make money. Yeah. So if the gymnastics team is, is killing us financially, because we got to take all this money from pot A to pay for pot B, cut the gymnastics. We don't because remember, every team doesn't have gymnastics. Every school doesn't have it. Right. So they're saying now, you but these are the Olympic sports and stuff like that that people are getting into. That, and these are the things I don't think most of us, including myself, we don't think about these kind of things when it when we hear NIL. We think basketball, football. We don't think about where these dollars and how things are allocated across whatever, 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 and how it pays for stuff. You have to remember, it still has to pay for their equipment, has to pay for their clothing, their insurance, their food, everything that they do. Let me do this real quick because my man hit me up and I want to say this to you. Watch this. Okay. Remember, these are non-generating, uh, uh, I'm sorry, non-money generating sports. And my man hit me up. This is College X. I'm not going to say what college it is. Uh -huh. These are all numbers. This is how it breaks down. Tuition. I'm just going with a rough number. $58,000. Fees. $2,000. Books. $400. He says, this is paid to the school's cost, not to the student, but still coming out of the athletic budget. So when Alabama pay, gives Jalen Milrow a scholarship, and I, these are not Alabama, I'm just using it. Uh -huh. Football cuts a check to the university for that total amount. Here's now the flip side to the players. Off-campus stipend, $14,300. Meal okay. allowance, $8,000. This is for the year. Cost of attendance, cost of attendance, $6,000. So if you add that up, that's $28,000. They get that in, in, in uh, he says, five payments a term. They get that in five payments on a, in a term. God, hold up. Then they still get their Pell Grant, which is $7,300 on top of that. This ain't not been an NIL or a collective. So now, mind you, you're paying that for 85 football players, mm -hmm. softball team, mm -hmm. women's basketball, gym that the other 19 teams all that money's coming out of. Yeah. So and no, what I'm bit, saying is it, okay. Go ahead. What are you saying? Go ahead. So what I'm saying is, so the money that's generated, yes, there's, but those other sports are being paid for. So if I'm in administration and I got to say, wait a minute, y'all got 25 people. Y'all you know, got 25 now people on the softball team. <laughs> I got to pay this. Mind you, I got to pay the coach. I got to pay the assistants. I got to pay the maintenance dude. We got to right. pay the dude that cut. Man, cut. Hey, cut softball, dog. We good. Cut right. softball. I, I, yeah, but, I, but no, street, listen, that's not what it's I don't, I don't understand. Do. Listen, dog. I don't understand. Okay. I had me a crash course in money this past year. The last four years I've been trading and, and learning how money works. But then I got a crash course in money. You know what I'm saying? When I partner with somebody who owns a lot of stuff. This system that you're explaining, these people have been happy to do, up in arms to do, and up in the bag, and up in the facilities, and up in the coaches' salaries, in the middle of all of this, right? They've been happy. This business model they created, they've been happy to run it. You know why? 
Because they're bringing their money hand over fist, though. I hear you. And they shouldn't be cutting any goddamn thing. What they should be cutting is some of these dudes' pockets that's being laced. <laughs> that's what they should be cutting. But that's not, but that's business though. Street stop, stop, street. We literally watch television shows. We watch Disney. Disney got more money than you can shake a stick at. And if that TV show is not doing well, guess what they do? In the middle of the season, be on the sixth episode, it ain't making the right numbers. Gone. I don't care how many people watching it. Gone. But, but hey, business doesn't have to always be 85 15, brother. It don't. What do you mean? I know somebody that worked for I know some, I, business doesn't always because because that's how it usually works. 85% of the profit <laughs> go to the owners and 15 get distributed between Walmart workers. It doesn't Correct. always have to be that, dog. It doesn't. There, but that's... There's some system. You, you heard Country Wayne say he paid his actor, that guy who I used to end my shows with, a million dollars last year. Hayes, you brought it up to me, didn't you? I did. How the fuck did Country Wayne figure out a way to compensate his actor a million dollars, right? And the color purple can't. Listen, business. I agree. But, yeah, but, but business, but that's because you say business doesn't mean it has to be goddamn 70 30. But street, you're right. But he also had he didn't pay, he didn't pay some random dude that he paid a dude that been with him forever that right because they got a relationship. I bet if I went for for country Wayne, he wouldn't have paid me no million. God just uh, met the dude. I, I think everybody that works for him get paid good. And, I think, hold on, good yeah. doesn't mean hold on, good doesn't mean equal. Hayes. The light skinned guy with the pretty eyes got what did he say? He got paid fourteen thousand for hustling flow. It was an independent film. Are you right? <laughs> Country <laughs> Wayne is independent. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, dog. But you, yeah, but that's yeah. But you're you're trying to yeah, nuance. Hey, eight, eight, stop eight, eight. it, dog. No, dog. Fourteen thousand. No, period. Fourteen thousand. Period for a fl for a movie that went and I think it won a fucking Emmy or some shit. Yeah, but that's after the fact. That's we'll after him, the fact. We'll pay him after the fact then. He should have negotiated that or not do the film, right? All but right, we don't right. know. But but that's the problem. Again, what happens? How many movies are made that those actors made 14 grand and, and it's on Tubi right now, making nothing? And that, that director is on his A right now because he paid him 14 grand and he don't have enough seed money to make another movie. We, we're looking sometimes. at it. It yeah, but it happens, it happens way more than success. That happens way more than success. Hustle and Flow worked. But how many movies are out there that never made it that those actors got paid? Those actors been put in and this, that, and the other. And it doesn't take off. They're on Tubi right now. I There's no reason that Taraj P. Henson, right, after if you go look at the roles she has played, right? <laughs> Way before Color Purple. You know what I'm saying? There's no reason she should be underpaid and talking about the numbers that, that she's getting paid from some of these roles. But she also if Country took, Wayne or if Tyler Perry it. figured out a way to give to give give to give what's the name a million dollars. The first time Sidney Poitier had ever got paid a million dollars. Street. Nope, I ain't gonna do it. Because you you told me I'm gonna leave them nameless. You straightened me out. About some made me so hot, I'm finna go split, old boy. Right or wrong? About a video. You know what I'm talking about. You got to know your worth. That's what we Thank talking you. about. Thank <laughs> you. So if Taraji Henson got paid that, then that's what she agreed upon. It's not like she agreed upon $4 million and they gave her that and they owe her money. She agreed upon that. So you can't cry over spilled milk. I think, I what, think she what, she, what she don't understand is she doesn't understand the numbers that are getting pushed toward her. Like, why would you offer me that? That's her fault. She's been in the business long enough. She's not a new I, actor like the I guy think, from Hustle yeah, and Flow. Yeah, but, I, but, I, but I think she, the fear of being blackballed and like like they like your girl plays hardball, right? The, the heavy set lady. And you see, you see what they did to her Monique. name. Yeah, Monique, you see yeah. what they did. You see what they did to her name. Capitalism. Her her husband Captain goes in there Lizzie. and plays hardball. He goes in there and plays hardball. And then they 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 dirty your name. Oh, she's hard to work with. She be far in on set. She coming there with a Cap bunch of lunchables and be eating them doing the middle. <laughs> capitalism. That's that's capitalism. 
That's exactly what happens. If I can get Taraji Henson, who has this name, and she's willing to take, I don't know what she got paid, $500,000, and she says, okay, great. Did she negotiate? Did she say, give me a million? I don't know. But again, that's why we take it in the fear of being blackballed. I had this I had this discussion with, with, with what's the name last night, with, with one of our, our teammates, Ray, and we were talking about that. Sometimes, I'm not saying Taraji's hungry, but like the right. man from I'm the captain now, uh, uh, damn Captain Phillips, he got paid 60 grand for that in a movie with Tom Hanks, and he's the co-star, but he had no experience. They got him out of the middle of the mall in Minnesota, no acting experience, no nothing. They didn't know if he was going to work, not going to work. This is what we negotiate. This is what it's going to be. He took it. Well, well I'll tell but you, you this. Some, we, hold on, but you see get... some actors. Hold on, real quick. You see some actors who have now gotten smarter that said, and I forget who it was. Maybe it was, uh, who's the guy that did Jason Bourne? Uh, um, uh, not Ben Affleck. What's his name? Anyhow. No, it's not Ben Affleck. Uh, Matt Damon, I believe. Matt Damon. And the born identity things, he was supposed to be in some other movie. But instead of getting paid, he took a lower percentage, but he took stock. Matter of fact, perfect example. What's your boy that sung for Lion King? The black dude, his name Jason something. Yeah, uh, he he sung, his, his, mama, his mama chose to take, yeah. His mama, guess what? Guess what? She, it's a risk. It's Disney, so the likelihood of taking off is great, but all Disney movies don't do great. So instead of the million, he took, uh, he, instead of the million, J Jason Weaver, thank you, Life of Bill. He took the stock option, actually, or, or credits or whatever it was, points, and he made more money in the long run. But for some people, what happened if you take that in the movie flop? So it's all on you. It's, it's on you. Because what if Taraji Henson said, don't pay me, just give me stock in, 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 in color purple. Give me points hey, in color purple. Don't I guarantee you, got paid they're probably not gonna, way they're more. Not gonna offer, nah, they're not gonna offer everybody that. I'm surprised that they offered that little boy that. They must be thought it was gonna. They, they thought it was gonna fail. <laughs> they, they're not gonna always offer anybody stock and or anything, bro. That's that is the hardest thing to get equity in something. Um, but I tell I tell you this, Hayes. We talk about. I, I just I just went out of town with some couples, right? And one of the couples' wives worked for the Seminoles. Hard Rock, the Seminoles. Well, I she didn't apply for state. We're gonna slap somebody. No, nah, the, the Seminoles, the Indians. She didn't apply for it. They came and found her because she has some hell of an accolades. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I asked her, like, how did you get hired by these people? She was like, they found me on Indeed. They saw my accolades. They saw what, what the, the some of the certificates I had, and and she said they hired her. Right. What she explained working for those people. Free cars. Giveaway money. Salary out of this, out of this, out of this world. It's like working for Google, she said. She said that it's the most giving company or giving set of people that she's ever worked for. That's how I know the workforce doesn't have to be the way it is. But street. No, you're wrong. You're wrong. She's just getting an abundance because they have an abundance. What I'm trying Shit. to tell you is she's getting free cars, this, this giveaways, because if you're making six trillion dollars, who cares if I give you a new car every two weeks? It's if I could, it's all if I could fire somebody, if, if I could make a decision to say, hey, let's fire Jimbo and pay him 70 million to walk out the door. <laughs> it's an abundance of money somewhere. Correct, but it's not their money. The The university did not pay Jimbo. Those boosters did. Those are outside entities. That Now, that money went through the university. Who but what I'm made telling, the decision to fire him, Hayes? The boosters, not the university. I guarantee it. Exactly. The That's what I'm saying. So thank you. The outside entity decided that, and it went through the university. The university doesn't have that. Now, Texas A&M got money. Don't get me wrong. Of but course. those those... Those those six, seven, eight billionaires that's got this oil, 72,000, I mean, 72 million is like 72,000. It's nothing to them. But that's what people have to understand. Everything is relative in life. Everything is relative. If you, the, the young lady you're speaking about is making all of this money, all of this money, 
How much do you think they're making? It's just like this. What is LeBron James' contract right now? What is LeBron James' contract? Only, let's see. No, nah, fact check, because y'all hit it up. Somebody put up. What's Le, what LeBron getting paid this, this, his contract right now? Or his highest paid contract of all huh? time? Two-year deal, $99 million. LeBron James' highest paid contract. He has a two million. So deal, thank you 90, for two years. 90, so fifty million dollars a year. <laughs> Hold on, but hear me out. Uh huh. Mind you, the owner got to pay, not just him. The owner has to pay all of them people: the coach, the the cat, the uh, uh, the vending lady that's selling hot dogs. They got to pay all this other the light bill. So how much money do you think they're making? That's my point. So, yes, LeBron is living the lap of luxury. Mm -hmm. But the owner, the owner is living whatever. Shit, man, you ever watch Shark Tank? You ever watch Shark Tank? Yeah. Do you know on Shark Tank, all of those people are millionaires? All of them. Yeah. But do you know that Mark Cuban can buy all of them and make them all? He can buy everything they had, all of them. Yeah. Even though they sit up there, they have very same knowledge, information. They all specialize in different things. But Mark Cuban's money is so much bigger than theirs. Yeah, he can buy them. Yeah, they're, and that's that's what I'm telling you. The the the, the Mikasuki Indian Casino is not on the same level as other companies. That's like you say Google and all of this stuff. It's so much money. It's so relative. Let me ask you the next question, dog. I want to go to some some solutions. What would be your solution to this thing right now? If you were the solution? guy, that came we ain't got no problem. Nah, let go they ahead. Came to <laughs> they come to D Streeter. How uh -huh. do you fix it? How do you fix it? How do you fix what? what tell me what's broken. You tell me. It's got to be something broken if people complaining. How do you fix it? I, no, I know that, that's not true. I, I think I, I don't. I don't know if anything is broken quite yet. I want to see how it shakes out in five years. Um, but right now, if you they came to you right now, if Ted Cruz called D Streeter from Footballville because you're so influential, I need you to come uh, on this panel and give me a potential solution. What would you say? Oh, I say I think y'all really need to pay these kids. I think y'all like like Harbaugh says. I think y'all need to get them involved with TV TV revenue. I think y'all need to really pay them for what they're doing. You know what I'm saying? They're showing up on Saturdays. Y'all getting paid for these TV deals. Y'all making these crazy SEC and the, and, the, and and putting these super conferences together so you can get the big money from ESPN. I, I think y'all need to let them kids tap in on that too. That, that's that's what I say. And, and stop this name, image, and likeness shit like this is golf. That was y'all throwing them a bone. Make them employees of the school, whatever the hell you have to do, because we've sent people to the damn moon. We've created AI. We could figure out a system <laughs> to pay these kids. Okay. Out of the real bucket of money that comes through college football. All right. Here's where I come up with. I came up with a little solution while I was listening to this, to this thing for an hour and a half. Not worked out 100%, but just that's just me. I say... And, I hear, and I'm going to tell you where the other problem is, Street, too. We're also looking at universities who are at the top of the hill. We're not. See, you have to remember. Are you only talking about the P5 schools and not the group of five schools? Because they're making their schools money, too. Are you talking about? SMU or Houston? Well, prior to them going to the conference. But what about teams like that? What about them? They, those kids out there playing, and they're making their team money, but they don't yeah, have they, the big TV contracts. So how do you do it? Or, or, or are we just talking about P five programs right now? I'm just talking about P five programs. I understand that they're always going to be, yeah. But the ones that are making big money, the, the P five programs, they're making the big money. Yeah, I mean, in these big Q's conferences, though, they 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 getting in the bed with ESPN doing these huge billion dollar deals. Come on, man. Come on. All right, and I got doing I got it on the back of amateurs. I did some math. All right, but I did some math, Street. You ready? P5 conference. Talk to me. Here's what I come up with. Y'all follow me on this. If you're in the Power 5 conference, and I heard them say the 40 grand a year 
whatever. I say give every kid that's on scholarship, your 85 kids on scholarship, $100,000. That's the starting quarterback to the ninth string kicker. If he is on scholarship, and this is every school, so therefore it's no, hey, if you go to Alabama, you get more money. Nope. Alabama get the same amount of money as uh, Vanderbilt, hundred thousand. Okay. okay. Now, if your ass can't live off a hundred thousand dollars a year, <laughs> it, probably, it ain't about to hold survive. Up. Hold up, hold up. No, no. What I'm trying to say is no, because people say, well, they got to send money home and all that. I'm just saying a hundred thousand dollars a year. You got your free food, your free education, all of that stuff. I ain't saying your your whole thing equals a hundred thousand because they're already at a hundred thousand. In so far as what they do for them, medical insurance, all of that stuff is already taken care of. So you give each school a hundred thousand dollars a year, eighty five players, right? Yeah, that's eight point five million dollars a year. That's it. Now, that's it. That's it. That's eight point five million dollars a year. That you pay now. Remind you, we got to talk other sports. Basketball, you may go down in that sum just because it doesn't generate the revenue. That's life. That's what it is. You understand what I'm saying, mm -hmm. right? It doesn't generate. You are a non-generating revenue generating team. Unfortunately, it's just like when the people complain about the WNBA, why they don't get paid as much because they don't generate the dollars that the NBA does. Unfortunately, that's just the reality of it. Unfortunately, right. the highest paid player we saw this last night makes $242,000 in the WNBA. $242,000. Mario Cristobal made that every two weeks. But anyway, $8.5 million. Now, mind you, it's not written in stone. I just thought about this while I was watching the show. I said, basically, double what you pay for them to come to your university and take care of them. Food. Clothing, I mean, food, uh, uh, housing, uh, insurance, medical, all that stuff. Training. Give them a hundred thousand. NIL. That's your. That's you. That's what the collector pays everybody. So you can't entice a kid to go to another school because they're gonna give you more. Everybody get the same. That's the standard. Now okay. NIL, that is that is up to you. And this is where NIL really makes a difference. A NIL is only going to be for the top people. Every the, NFL people, player is not me. Yeah. Or the people with Hold the on. social Every media NFL, following. Yeah. But that's where you that's where you as a person and a player have to you got to put some skin in the game too, dog. You got to create a buzz. And my right. thing is you got a hundred stacks, that's four hundred thousand dollars for four years through that university. Five, if you go there, the half a million dollars you got paid to go to that university. And some of these dudes, like the quarterback Mohassan, threw 17 passes in his whole career. And he made $500,000. It's an incentive for them to stay in school. This is an incentive for all of that stuff. Now, I'm going to be a little funny about this. And I know you don't want to hear it. I would strongly suggest also that 50% of that 100000 goes into some type of investment situation that goes in that you can't break it until five years, you know, you leave the program. Like it has to stay in there. Like you, you make those contributions and it has to stay in there. That way you teach them how to invest. But yet that money's going to make money. Because like I said, you're already getting $50,000 a year. And you fifty thousand dollars a year, you have nothing to pay for. So why not take fifty percent of that, throw it into whatever that investment is, tax shelters, whatever. I don't know, Bitcoin, whatever. <laughs> They'll be rich, then. I'm just, saying, I'm just saying. Rich. So think about, think about that. Think about that. So you take fifty of it, it automatically goes there, almost like a quote, you know, quote unquote trust. So once you leave school, because we know only one percent of the kids that play college ball are going to go into the NFL, you now have a nest egg to start a business with, 
buy a home. You didn't blow it in the Gucci store. You didn't blow it at the Prada store. You didn't blow it by, at, at getting a Hellcat. That's one. Right. And if you're an NIL dude, if you're a top dude, NIL is just what it is. Before we had NIL, why was Tim T Tebow's jersey selling? Not because he was a nice guy. He was the hottest damn player out there. Johnny Manziel, the hottest player out there. Unfortunately, nobody knows who the, the pulling guard is for Texas A&M. But if he goes create a yeah, social not media, yet. Book, we're gonna get one. Yeah, somebody. Yeah. No, we got one mm -hmm. now. Trent, right. Trent Williams. Eric, a lot of people know who he is. Right, like he became this this thing when he got on the I Am Athlete podcast. But it also teaches them what you got to also you got to also now street speak, speak, speak this. If you don't want to create a buzz, fine. You got your nest egg. Go on about your business. But your your name, image, and likeness is not, to me personally, it is not the university's responsibility to make your name bigger. It's your responsibility to make your name bigger through your gameplay and through what you do and how you interact with your people and your fans. Right. I agree. Because you have, think about it, the Cavender Twins. The Cavender Twins, do me a favor, Street, because I'm scared I'll, I'll, I'll lag. Type up how many followers do the Cavender Twins have? How many, how many social media Shit. followers? I want to say it's around 4 million. I may be wrong. I mean, Just yeah, in but, total. But it's, a, it's, it's across different platforms. It's hard. to Let, let me see if we can find it. Yeah, it, it has it because I've looked it up before. I just don't want to do it because I'm a lag. It'll tell you how many okay. total followers does, do they have. Let me see. The Cavender Twins, Fresno State basketball playing twins. So if you, I want to say it's around three or four million, somewhere in there. With the combined social media following of nearly five million. Five. And let can I, can I be honest? They ain't, they ain't got the same name as Bryce Young or Caleb Williams, but apparently they do. They got five million. Because why? Because they are they are active on their social media. They built that social media. Their gameplay didn't build their social media. They built their social media. They went yeah. on there. They interact with people. They took pictures. So guess what? They built a following, and therefore yeah. they have nil deals. And there's probably girls on the University of Miami team who are a hundred times better than them athletically. One of them didn't even hardly play. If I'm wrong, I'm not trying to be funny. Yeah, I, I mean, it's Hayes. It's funny you say that, Hayes, because when I went to see them play, two things, two things stuck out to me. They were, they were, they were normal looking. They wasn't as gorgeous in person, right? And they weren't the best girls on the team. Thank you. And I was. And it took me back because I was like, "Oh, wait a minute! It was a girl out of Pompano that was that was obviously better than better than them." But she didn't work the NIL. She didn't right. work it. And the thing that I'm this is back to what I'm saying. I'm gonna go into the development part of this. She didn't work it. Those girls worked it. Angel Reese worked NIL. Angel Reese took that spark. Think about this. I don't know. I don't know uh, 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 Caitlin Clark. I know her, but her social media presence is nowhere near as Angel Reese. And I heard, I don't know, that Caitlin Clark is way better than Angel Reese as a basketball player overall. I know they play different right. positions, but her athletic ability is way is better than Angel Reese. But Angel Reese right. is probably making more money through NIL than Caitlin Clark, the number one player in women's basketball, because of her social media presence. Right. She got Shaquille O'Neal coming. Yeah, I know he went to LSU. But did, but if Caitlin Clark played for LSU and she was just still Caitlin Clark, he may have gone to a game. But would she be calling him Unk? Hey, Unk, what's up, Unk? <laughs> no. She's, she's, she's working it. 
That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Studio said Andrew Reese look way better too. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm just, I, all I'm saying is if, if you're a kid and you want your name, image, and likeness, bro, imagine if Johnny Manziel could come through right now with his personality. Holy smokes, bro. <laughs> holy my boy said, holy smokes. Holy smokes, Batman. But he said, holy smoke. He smokes, Batman. Bro, th just think about that. So for the people I, that just coming in here, coming in here, man, we we well, well, we just we just kind of had a debate on Nick Saban going to Congress saying that hey, the NIL needs to be there needs to be some brackets, a system around it that the big fish are going to eat up all the little fish and things are not going to be fair. Um, and my whole thing was that things ain't never been fair uh, in college football. Big uh, has always been taking a little bang. And Hayes is just saying that it needs to be some type of structure. Like, it needs to be some guardrails. Um, I just feel that, hey, these coaches and these schools, they got the resources. They, 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 they need to figure it out. Is it the wild, wild west? It's definitely wild, wild west, but we're only calling it that. We're only calling it that is because chickens have come home to roost in college football. <clears throat> is that how you say the saying? The roosters have chicken. come home to the chickens. <laughs> we're it's only gone. calling it that because they opened up with the NCAA, opened up a door, and the hinges came off that mug. Some of the wall got broke down. <laughs> the back door opened up, <laughs> and now it's it's no, who can no, get no. to the business faster. And the I'm Texases and the Miamis, mm -hmm. and it's it seems like yeah, it seems like they're they're out front and running. And a lot of these traditional powerhouse programs, they probably can't U turn fast enough. Right. I'm just looking at like we talked about it. We we had a show on there talking about the Sanders had a blueprint to NIL. They had a spark. I did a show about that. I did a, a walking the the exercise. Of my thought. They could have made money on NIL just for who they are. Yeah, we could say they daddy, but one thing I take my hat off to them. Their daddy may be helping them in the background, but look what the son did. The son went and grabbed the camera. The, the brother I meant went and grabbed the camera. The other one's on there. Boom, they doing yeah. it. They doing it. Look at Travis Hunter. Travis Hunter's working his stuff. He got an NIL deal with, uh, uh, is it bar stools? He sit in a onesie and, and talk to the people. Them. Yeah. We sat down and it's had an interview with him. We had to talk to his people. He was like, hey, man, we talked to my people. We had to set an interview with his, with his agent, with his, with his with the people <laughs> and, 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 and present them what we was trying to present to Travis Hunter. He got a, he got a couple of NIL deals, NIL deals signed up. Bro. Can I tell you what, listen, I'm going to tell you what's going to shock y'all in that interview, in that interview that I just, I mean, not the interview, that round table. I want to go back to these Cavender twins. The lawyer that they had, they had so they start listing off all the NIL stuff they had going on. And the uh -huh. lawyer said, Yeah, that's a few of them, but they have quite a, and and they said they have equity in those NIL deals. They're not just getting a check. They have equity in these companies. A sports drink they helped develop. Who the hell drinking? Nobody even I don't <laughs> even know their numbers, dog. What so you back say? to you when they do. I don't even know what numbers they are. Are they 15 and 16? Are they uh -huh. 71 and 17? I don't know. But what I'm saying is they have maximized it because they took it and they said, we're going to run with it. And that's what's important. I want to say this piece, and I think this is super important. And I'm looking at this from a coach perspective. They also brought up, and this is where Nick Saban has said in the intro clip, shout out to 307 people in the building. Thank you all for stopping by. This is Hay Street. We are in Washington, D.C. right now. That's the monument over there. <laughs> That's the most we ever had? Uh, Why we lit? We lit tonight, dog. What's going look, on tonight? Hold up. Shot. 
Hold up. Shut up. Shut up. We at 305, baby. Hold up. Hold up. I got to get. Oh, Lord. Hey, he's tightening up. Tighten up, hey. Hold on. 305, baby. Hold it up. Hold it up. Street. 305. Street. We got 305 for a chain. There you go. No, other way. Other way. There you go. Now you're right. Uh, you said 503. There you go. I was after the school. I was after the school. School that day, though. You show absolutely. You show You must just show the basketball. <laughs> this is why your NIL <laughs> deals will suffer. Day, this is why your NIL deals will suffer. You ain't gonna play it. <laughs> no, but seriously, now we at three ten. All right, it's over. But no, what I was just saying was the development part, and I believe this. I know y'all don't want to hear this, but it is the truth. The transfer part. The way these kids are transferring, I'm telling you, is diluting the game and the quality of player. I don't care who or what you're saying or who we're saying. It's diluting it. I'm going to give you a reverse on this because this is what I thought about as I saw it. I'm going to ask you, Street. I'm going to put you on the spot if you don't mind. Spotlight, spotlight. Ready? What's up? Let's go. Why do you think why do you think Tyler Van Dyke struggled as a quarterback in as in whole? If you had to pick one thing, why do you think Tyler Van Dyke struggled? I'm just using him because we know him well. Why do you think uh -huh. he struggled as a quarterback overall? Why do I think he struggled as a quarterback overall? If you had to pick, what would what do you think the main thing was why he struggled as a quarterback overall? Just one thing. You can only pick one. He 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 couldn't read defenses. Why is that then? Why he can't read defenses? Mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not sure why he couldn't read defenses. Okay. What what if I leave this to you? What if I tell you he started off his career with Rhett Lashley? Then he had Josh Gaddis, and then he right. had Shannon Dawson. He had three different coordinators. Mm -hmm. what do you think? Do you think? Do you think that could? Do you, do you think that could have been a main culprit in why he was not doing very well? I think that. I think that. I think that. Could, yes. I think for every kid that goes through that, especially the quarterbacks, that is a disservice to the kid. Mm -hmm. So if it's a disservice to the kid for the university, then why would they put themselves for that same disservice when they transfer to three different schools, getting three different coordinators? Same thing. They're doing the same thing. They're just doing it to themselves. Think about this. Now he's on his fourth coordinator. He's on his fourth coordinator as a player. So it's the same exact thing. So, <laughs> so, it's the, so it's the same exact thing. When the coaches change on a kid all the time, the reason he didn't do well, because he's on his third coordinator. He's on a, So when kids in general constantly uh -huh. going to different places, and I'm not saying coaches don't change, but just follow me on this. Okay. When you're constantly being taught by different people all the time, everybody teaches different. The common denominator is you. You just told me, shout out to your man, Sly. Hopefully I, I'm not talking too much here, but shout out to Sly. He's been with certain receivers. I'll leave it like that unless you, you, you spill the bag. But he's been okay. with certain receivers for a long time. So those receivers are doing what? They, the, the young man I'm about to tell you that you told me was so impressive with his route running is because he's been with the same guy for 10 years. <laughs> right, right. But the other same, receiver. Same guy, same guy that know what he's talking about. And he know what he's talking about. So the, so the other receiver that has good talent and great talent, he's not been with him. And he's just picking up on something that guy been with somebody for 10 years. Right. So now when you see players hopping from school to school to school to school, the first thing people will say is he ain't being developed. Shit, he's been to three different schools. He's been at four different schools. Right. And, and it gets confusing. It, it gets confusing when a kid is so talented, right? Like a Jamar Gibbs that he could just up. Yeah, when he could just up and leave and go anywhere. And, he, only, and, or like, he made one change. He made one change. I mean, he hey, we, we we talked about that multiple school shit the other night. Like, ain't too no, many kids going that. to three schools. 
Okay, dog. It is, dog. I'm telling you, it's a lot of kids leaving, dog. Think about why you got kids that start out of school. They got the one time transfer. And then when they grad, when they're graduate, they could transfer again. Mm -hmm. Now that may not be true, but what we're saying is the development of players. Right, right. And, and changing systems and being a part of multiple systems. Yeah. That's, that's going to hurt you every time. It's tough. Mm -hmm. It's tough. You know, it is. Yeah. Can you be a one off and be successful? But we're just talking about the overall development of players, and that's going to trickle into the NFL because that's where the NFL get their players from college. So you're going to have more players going into the NFL with their super athletic, but less fundamentals and technique, less understanding how to play the game, less understanding the nuances because they're always leaving and going to different places. Not always, but you get what I'm saying. It's a few. I mean, I, I think it's a small. Bro, I it's think more it than a few. Bro, you got kids out here. Portion. We got 40, we got 40 transfers, dog, on, on the Miami Hurricane. That sounds crazy, don't it? Think about what I'm about to tell you. Hold on, I'm gonna show you something. Our top players for the Miami Hurricanes have been who? Transfers. Transfers, Charleston Rambo transfer, Rambo uh, uh, Charleston Rambo transfer, Bubba Bolden transfer, Henry Parrish transfer, uh, uh, Quincy Roche transfer, um, Kiko Kiko <laughs> Mario transfer. Who's our best player last year? Derek King transfer, um, uh, Kobe Young transfer, um, Cam, Cam Kitchens was the best player last year. Restrepo was the best player last year. They weren't transfers. No, all right, that's two. Okay, but but it, but, two, but, two, but, two, but to your but to your point, yeah, it, right, and that's wild. Some of those guys play better here than they played where they came from. Jalen Phillips transfer. Yeah. So when we saying they not transferring, like they transferring. Yeah, but you just you just went like a span of six years. <laughs> They feel been in the league for three, four years. Like, but that's what I'm telling you. They've been Tyreek Stevenson. Thank you, Reggie. Transfer. Which I'm just talking about. They've been transferred. It ain't like it just start happening. I'm telling you how long this has been happening. Bro, listen. The hostile environment of college football and what some of these kids was dealing with. Man, I don't give a fuck. If they transferred four times. Now, what's happening is that's not being talked about is is how they're dying in the transfer portal. Cam Ward, third year transfer. <laughs> Cam, Cam and, Ward, and, third year and, transfer. And welcome. And, and welcome. I was, <laughs> welcome. Yeah, I welcome. Welcome, Cam Ward. Listen, man, let's get up out of here, boy. It's been two hours, man. You got to own I got one. I got one more thing to say. Oh, my God. How you still got one thing? We've been on for two hours. <laughs> how, how big of a program did you program today? Like, woo, woo, woo. <laughs> I got one more thing to say. In the Heisman. The Heisman, three of the four with transfers. All, all of them was transfers, wasn't they? Who was the it's four? Marvin four? Harrison. Ma Marvin Harrison. Oh, Marvin Harrison was the four. All the quarterback was transfers. Mm -hmm. Transferred. So that means it's working. That means that mean keep transferring because it's working. You wait one day too, be sitting in the Heisman room. The development ain't working. But anyway, listen, much love, dog. Go ahead, go ahead, Street. Yeah, we good. Great, we got 300 people today, here, dog. man. You want to leave and we hot right now. Great, great show today, dog. Great show today, dog. Great show today. I ain't gonna I want to go. Hey, I want to go off on Nick Saban so bad. I want to go off on him so bad. But as that's I, my I, own I, I, am, I am uh, uh, urged. What Ellen at? What, what Ellen V at? That's my own see how. I don't see how. Nick Ellen V. Seven o'clock last night. Hayes was killing Nick Saban. Mm, 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 mm. And came right back in here <laughs> on his side, Ellen V. <laughs> I don't see how. Because I saw the whole thing. I saw the whole oh, thing. I watched. Oh, two faces. I believe in contact. Son of a. You was the main I one last night with the pitchforks. With the fire outside the house. Come on out here, boy. Got something for you. Come on. Open that door. Come on out here. <laughs> Smile in your face all you the time. The trying to take one. your place. 
back stab. Yeah, right back in here. I'm hot with it, though. I still think it's yeah, really? You know what, I man? Nick Saban might be right, man. Hoping Nick Saban getting a coach. You think Nick Saban going to hire you? He ain't he done coaching, Hayes. Light skin, boongy liquor. Kissing ass. He ain't hired kissing me, man. Ass. I had a chance. Hey, can I tell you this? I did have a chance, dog. I was trying to get in on special teams, dog. You know what they had a nerve to tell me? Let me tell you how nasty what? they did your boy. I'm going to just tell you my Nick Saban story, dog. So, <laughs> I'm going to tell you all the story about me trying to get to Alabama. So Alabama at this time, I don't know what year this was. Let me see. Where was I at? I was in Miami. So I had to be maybe Jackson. So they had a special team position open. This is going to tell you how the game is, how we can't get in. Just call it what it is. They had a special team spot open. I'm going to leave the other coach nameless. He was over special teams. We was cool as a fan. We done done some dirt. You understand me? Like, you know, NCAA cracked down on you for what we done. I'm out here doing my Johnny Manziel right now. I hit him on the phone. Do, 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 do. Hey, boy, y'all got a spot. I, hey, it's da, da, da. Yeah, coach. You know what a dude had never tell me? What? We looking for a guy that specializes in special teams. <laughs> I said, hold on, this is God's on this is God's on a true story, y'all. I said, specialize in special teams. I said, what coach, what coach wants to coach football that says he's gonna be the special teams coach? Like when you first start coaching, you want to coach D-line, you know, whatever. Linebackers, running back, receiver. So I told him straight up, dog. I said, bro, I said, you know, we go back, man. I said, but no, don't don't try me like that, man. Nah, coach. Nah, for you real. You told bro. that to who? To the coach. Okay. I said, man, don't, I said, man, don't try me like that. Come on, dog. I said, don't, don't. No, I told him, I said, don't try me like that, dog. Come on, for real. Now he like, nah, coach, for real, man. Listen, you know, they want to get a guy that specializes. I said, name one person that specializes in special teams. Name me one coach that specializes. I said, you know what? Matter of fact, you don't even have to answer that. I said, do this. Do me a favor. And I said, I said, do this. I said, I know here's what it is. Because he used to always brag about he had power. Like, not uh-huh. power, but like, you know, man, you know what I mean? Hey, boy, I'm the man around there, blah, blah, blah. This is why I know I be getting in trouble. I'm like Monique. All right? I get, I get black. <laughs> you do act like Monique like, a little bit. I know, but this is what I told him, Street. I told him just <laughs> like this. Bro. I said, dog. I said, man, let me just tell you something straight up. It's two things. And you tell me which one it is. Either one, you don't believe in me. Or two, you don't have the power you say you have. Uh oh. It's only one of those two things. Uh oh. Cause see, we we done talk ball. We done been on the board. We done watch film together. I done I done came up there. I done watched film. I done broke down film with you. We in there, blah, blah, blah. We going back and forth. So it's either you don't believe in me or you don't have the power you say you have. So which one is it? Man, come on, dog. You know it ain't like that, bro. Nah, nah, nah come on, man. Tell me. You got an opportunity. You over it to hire somebody. At least put my name in a damn hat. And see, that's what's wrong in our coaching, in our facility, that we don't want to put somebody else's name in there because you know why? And I and I understand this, but I don't like it. We don't want to be the one to suggest somebody and it doesn't work out, then it's a hit against us. We'll why rather... Such, why is that such a big deal? Because you get held accountable for that. It's like the mob. Hey, yo, Vinny. Come in. <laughs> you brought D Streeter in here and he's stealing from us. Cut Vinny's throat. <laughs> it's like that. That's how they feel. Nobody. Ain't bringing nobody in, Hayes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you stay in Orlando. Exactly. Exactly. But so it's easier for them to say, hey, well, coach, you the one told this guy to come and ain't work out. You the one brought him in here. And that's why you don't see a lot of coaches getting opportunities when they can, because at the end of the day, they don't have a power that they say they have. Hmm. And they don't have the power. They won't even put your name in the hat because they scared. If you do get it. And, and, and that's why I say you either, either you don't, I remember this, this phone call was on a Thanksgiving night, dog. It was a Thanksgiving night. i never forget that. I was standing on the front porch at the old girl crib talking to the dude. And I say, dog, it's two things. Either you don't believe in me or you don't have the power you say you have. So which one is it? 
That's a god on the truth, though. He was, he was playing with it. He was playing with his manhood then. He playing with mine. I'm trying to eat. I'm out here starving. I'm he trying to eat. I ain't playing with his manhood. I'm trying to eat. You say you my homeboy. We out here. Hey, like Ply say, boy, we laid in bushes together. Boy, we done did dirt, boy. And you gonna tell me you now is now now so 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 what we did is dirt for. Huh? You you ain't think coaches gonna come back and say, let me get that. Let me get a, I'm I'm not asking you to pay me. I'm asking for an opportunity. Oh, I'm not I'm asking you to cut me a check. What he what he I, said. He said can I, can I say we laid in bush? I'm talking about the Ply song. We <laughs> talking about we robbing people together. But see, I get it though. Y'all go listen to that song. That's your own. See how you don't see how your homeboys. That song. Oh, you don't see how your homeboys. No, nah, I got a bunch of. <laughs> you don't see how your homeboy did uh, you like that? Damn, but you got a sad oh, music story. You got a sad Alabama story. Oh, Michigan. That it's t- that's why I tell people the dope, the dope game is easier than the coaching game. I don't know why people don't believe that, bro. Hey, man. What you don't see how? I wish Plaza, I don't see how it is. I wish Plaza go back and rap like he used to back then, dog. This, that, that, that new, that, that. <laughs> I don't like that 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 the new plies. I like the old plies. We got more like access to plies. I like the new plies though. I think we got more access to them, man. Dog, funny. I'm talking more the than rapping, the rapper. The rap, no, the rapping style. I'm saying the rapping style, not the person, but the rapping style. I'm saying when he used to rap, the way he was rapping, so far as even his voice and all that was different. But I don't know. I ain't got no. I, I don't see how the hell it's Thursday and we've been on here two hours and Bitcoin went up to ninety eight thousand dollars. <laughs> Listen, man, shout out to everybody who are here. Don't know why he's talking about Bitcoin, man. But um, IOD squad, 786-405-9499. If you, if you want to just come watch us trade, we put out plays every day. Um, we talk about crypto. and Because I've been talking to them about ball and Bitcoin and ball for the years. When Bitcoin went down to 25000 I told them to buy it. Now it's 72000 at its all-time high. And they ain't going to listen to us about 150000 so that's why he's bringing up Bitcoin. I mean, because it's Bitcoin and ball. That's what football will turn into. We talk about Bitcoin and ball. Hey, I mean, hey, Street, what name did I give you a long time ago? Well, we kept talking about wanting to do a show like this. And I was talking about, hey, Street, what was the name I gave you? I don't remember the no, name you gave me. Remember I said the name we could do the show. What the name of the show could be? I thought it was Hey Street we always used to come up with. Ah, way before that. No, we've been trying to put Hay Street on for at least three years, dog. <laughs> I thought it was always Hay Street. That's the truth. Nah, it was called Ball, Bitcoin, and Beyond. Remember that? Bit- Bitcoin, Ball, and Beyond, yeah. Bitcoin, Ball, yeah, ball and Beyond. Bitcoin, and Beyond. Shout yeah. out to L&B. L&B, L&B, be on, L&B be on time, boy. L&B anyway. be on time. She know when to put that vibrator down and get to work, don't she? Hey man, mother. Ellen, you on get, get him, Ellen. With that sticky keyboard. Ellen, yeah. whatever she you, whatever you put up, that, whatever you put up the LNV, whatever you put up, that, I'm putting on the screen. She be hey, on matter of fact, street. That... You need to... Street. I'm finna have you come in. Ellen I'm finna have you come into the what you call it, into the Discord <laughs> in the locker room. They gonna get it to you. They gonna get it to you right now. And the B said she can't handle Damn, the road. I ain't know you was gonna... she got it. <laughs> the B said she she can't handle the roses. She gotta tap out. It'd be too much. Let the B say she gotta tap out. She got asthma. Street. Can't be you can't be Street. doing <laughs> what up? Do what me up? a favor. Street. Turn to the left and go walk in that corner right there. And you got five minutes. You got five minutes in the corner. <laughs> and if he told the truth, man, you got five minutes in the game. I'm the real of the game. You already know. What's that Jeezy, that boy? In the chat. Anyway. Uh, is that Jeezy? <laughs> oh, my, my, bad, my bad. My bad. <laughs> that I'm Jeezy was so hard. Here. We all, hey. He was at Jazz in the Garden weekend. I ain't even go, dog. 
I'm the realest hey, nigga in here. We already know. Bro, Hold my homeboy had, uh, home had a bachelor party. We did not have a DJ. That Jeezy album had just came out, and we just let it play. I heard that Jeezy album 38 times that night. It just played over and over and over again. <laughs> I already know what time it is. LV from Miami, dog. She said that was too much. That, that's too much. LV said she need a... <laughs> go in that corner and sit down. <laughs> what? She said that's too much. Go, on, go, over that, go in that corner. Go sit down in that corner. Listen. Too much. Tomorrow. Can we do this? Mm -hmm. The last 30 okay. minutes of the show was some crazy happen. I need to spend 30 minutes talking about some music. Classic album. Remember the Source 5 mics and all that? Uh-huh. I need some hits, dog. We got to talk about some hits. It's going to be Friday. It's going to be, you know what I'm saying? It's Friday. It's chill day. Man, you know what I'm saying? Everybody get their cane juice out, whatever. I tell you this show is going to go long because I, I did want to do that. But hold up, Street. I never did ask you this. What's your opinion about my my platinum plan, dog? For the NIL deal. What, what, what's, what's your opinion? You never gave me no, your that, opinion about that what I like said. It, it sounds like, it it sound like it presents some structure. It's not like it presents some stru present some structure. I, I just don't like the fact that caps are already. Set. Anytime you're talking about, anytime you're talking about athletes getting money, we always want to talk about caps. Cap got to be put there's on no this. Cap, cap got to no, be there's on no cap. We need. No, there's no cap. Street. There's no cap on it. There's no cap. There's a hundred thousand dollars from the university. Your name, image, and likeness is uncappable. You go make it whatever you want to make it. Whatever the NIL is, you go, go, go. It'll have companies come to you and make it whatever you want to make it. There's no now, cap. But the colleges are exploiting that, though. Like, like the, the, the colleges are the ones created the collective to exploit the NIL. And then now we blame it. <laughs> but that's because the NCAA that. didn't step up. If uh -huh. the NCAA, yeah, but what all I'm saying is you got to have, you have to make a decision in this point. Do you think what I made, do you think what I said is okay? Do you think $100,000 per kid? Because remember, we're not capping the kid. We're getting, because remember that you said everything is not fair. Is it fair that a dude, I hate to bring him up, like Mo Hassan, who threw 17 passes in his entire college career, gets a hundred, gets $400,000? Is that fair? <laughs> Hell no. But he's getting it because we're giving everybody that. Am I right or wrong? <laughs> and if you think about college football, actually, they're getting overpaid because the majority of the majority of the kids that come on the roster don't play. They don't play. Moha son with his 17 passes. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Hold on, you want me to read it? Oh, let me see. <laughs> no, don't read I'm it. I'm gonna blow this up. I'm gonna <laughs> read it out loud. That's what Street just put on the screen right there. <laughs> All right, Street. So, what else you want to talk about? These nuts. Let's get up out of here, man. It's, been two, it's the best show we don't had, though, dog. Yeah, the best show, fun, it's the best Hey Street show we don't have, man. Yeah, we have fun, man. But anyway, all that being said, this is Hey Street Catches Monday through Friday, uh, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time ish, somewhere around there. But just be ready about 7 05, you'll be good, <laughs> you know what I mean. Uh, and uh, we'll be good to go. We talk about just whatever comes up that day or whatever's hot out there on the street. And uh, we have a good time with it, man. Make sure you check us out. WREs are coming out uh, on this side of the street. We got the Discord, so go check that out. That link should be in the description. You can buy you some Bitcoin over there on that side of the street. <laughs> l &P selling roses on that side of the street. Uh, Insane DW. Oh, hey, man, he got, he got that black label that come with the cane juice cup. Uh, Shaz and, and if he might be selling PT, she done broke a vibrator. She might be selling some PT, some playing time. Nah, she. she <laughs> LV <laughs> selling roses. She selling roses. <laughs> uh, Shad over there selling transmission fluid. 
down the street there on the end. Uh, my man, uh, South Coast Kane, he's selling uh, crawfish with no legs on them. So we got whatever you need, we got it, man. And so with all that being said, uh, we out of here, I guess. We in Washington, D.C. Peace.